1925 building is being reimagined as a luxury residence with some of the world's finest amenities, such as private boat slip, private captain day yacht, half acre rooftop pool terrace, private screening room, and much more. Hi, I'm Allison Greenfield. I'm a partner at Lionheart Capital. The developer of the Ritz-Carlton Residences in Miami Beach. The reason why this project was so special is because we realized that we had the opportunity to do a project here that had never been attempted in South Florida and perhaps the chance would never come again. Adaptive architecture brings out the shine of this diamond in the rough and we experience luxury living at its finest on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra. Today we're exploring a truly amazing South Florida property. It's the site of the King Cole Hotel built in 1925, which later became the Miami Heart Institute and now begins its third life as the Ritz-Carlton Residences Miami Beach. The developers decided against knocking it down and pulled out all the stops to adapt the use of this structure. This 700,000 square foot enclosed pre-existing medical structure was turned into 111 condo units through the use of creative design solutions and radical reconstruction. Balconies were added to every unit for residents to enjoy the amazing views. So we're here today with Allison Greenfield with Lionheart Capital. She's one of the partners of Lionheart who happens to be the developer on this project. Allison, welcome to SoFlo Home Project. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about the amenities here because I know that you have really raised the bar. Well, fortunately for us, we're able to raise the bar because we have a unique site. So we are able to use that to have a beautiful marina for our owners, a houseboat that takes them to the beach. Not our, a bad amenity at all. <laughs> not if you can have it. We actually have a fly-in program where you can fly in from the airport on a helicopter, land in the Bay of Biscayne, and have the boat transfer you to your home. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have an exercise trail that circumnavigates the property along the water side as well as on the land side, which is beautifully landscaped to match the residential neighborhood in which we sit. You know, I'm thinking in, in Miami, you know, you typically think about luxury high rise, right? So here you're adapting a space, an existing space that is more of a low rise, but making it incredibly luxurious. So what were, were there any challenges in that? When you're using an existing structure, you end up having a lot more space to play with. Uh, because not every space is gonna work as efficiently as it would if you were drawing on a piece of paper today. Because of the existing properties were once a hotel and of, of course and also a, the Heart Institute. The Miami Heart Institute was actually a campus of buildings that started with the King Cole Hotel and ended up becoming six different buildings built over the period of 25 years, all in a different style, all in a different construction method. So reusing it was quite challenging. However, what it did is it enabled us to have very interesting spaces. We often laugh and say that most buildings today are built for maximum efficiency. This is built for maximum inefficiency. <laughs> so right now we're here in the lobby and the adaptive use and the adaptive architecture of the space, I think that's so cool. So the decor in here is so nice because it's set on like a neutral ground, which I think feels very South Florida and calming and neutral. So the concept of our common spaces was to make them feel as though you were in the well-curated home of a world traveler. Interesting individual things like... It's a great piece. Our samurai <laughs> from the 16th century, which is an original piece. It is actually the dress of a samurai from the 16th century. Very cool piece. Very cool. Of course, interesting artifacts, sculptures, things that just would entice you when you are walking down a street in a country and, and wanted to bring it back. And then, of course, that's augmented by books about art, travel, sculpture, fashion. A little of everything. A little of everything. We got some saucy novels up there. You're feeling that it's a global kind of experience. Yes. 100% accomplished that. And now I just want to talk about this table real quick okay. because yes. I've seen a lot of coffee tables. This, yes. if you had this many items on a flat table, it'd feel like a lot. Yes. But because of the levels, it's like eye-catching. You're right. It just allows you to play with your accessories without it becoming boring. No, it's the first thing I looked at and we've got these beautiful accessories, but behind us, 
the staircase. Talk to us about this. So this staircase was actually built in Northern Italy in a small town. It came in containers in three pieces and welded the three pieces together in a very beautiful and delicate way so that you cannot even see where the seams no, are. No, it's fully seamless. It's seamless. It is our sculptural moment in this beautiful, very tall lobby, which again is somewhat unique because we had to use existing structures. Coming up on Soplo Home Project, see how luxury condos were created from medical rooms and even a parking structure. I'm Takanata with FHIA, and this homeowner was tired of putting up plywood. They decided to upgrade with new hurricane protected windows. We're going to take a look at the installation on today's Sofla Home Project. Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we're here today at the beautiful Ritz-Carlton Residences Miami Beach with Allison Greenfield from Lionheart Capital, one of the developers on this beautiful project. Allison, so now we're in one of the models, and we're here in the living room, and of course the first thing I notice is the high ceilings. This is not something you see every day in a condominium. Creating luxurious condos out of odd-sized spaces was a challenge solved with creative design that hid flaws and accentuated features. This 4,500 square foot three bedroom and 3.5 baths unit is a great example of that. One of the interesting things about doing adaptive reuse is the inefficiency of it. And one of the things that comes out of that inefficiency is that we end up with really interesting spaces that you would never be able to design today because they would just be cost prohibitive. The first, second, and third floor units have 12 and a half foot ceilings. They're like living in a loft in yeah, New York it's a City great ceiling height. or Chicago. <laughs> and that's why you have those ceiling heights in those cities because they have adapted an old building into a new use. Makes sense. Makes such a big difference because yeah. it just Something about a higher ceiling in a room makes it feel so light and airy and expansive, and especially when you're by the beach and the water, the it all flows. Yes. So yes. now we've got this beautiful light here, by the way, yes. which is just a stunning piece. Is, is this, this another is, Italian this piece? This is Baxter, yes. This is one of their signature chandeliers, which is just awesome. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And it's, it's the most, and it plays to the ceiling height. Yes. Now you can't just do this in any old ceiling height. No. Because of the height. Of course. It yes. allows it. Yes, it does. We have so much light and air, as you said, we almost have to bring it down to yeah. ground it. So are there any other things in other uh, units um, that are different. Are there some loft spaces, I believe? Yes, we have, so as I said, 62 different layouts. And because this was a campus of six different buildings built in different styles with varying ceiling heights, every building varied in the product that we were able to sort of polish out of the rawness of what we were given. In our West building, we have on the first four floors loft units, so they're living rooms with very high ceilings, 17 foot ceilings. Loft, that true loft living. Yes, a real loft. We had to move shear walls, we had to move cores, we had to move a lot of stuff that as a hospital they didn't care. They had a lot of things on the window wall that as a luxury residence would not make sense to have on your window wall. You need wall. the windows. You need the views, you need the glass, Everything. you need the light, you need the air. Well, so. these floor to ceiling windows truly allow you to appreciate all of Miami Beach. And speaking of windows, let's see what Tac Granada from FHIA has for us today. So my little guy at home has a lot of questions about what his dad does and how we help families. So we decided to bring him along to see a great installation and how we're able to protect homes and protect families for the hurricane season. So Lex, now that we're here, you have any questions for me? Yeah, so dad, this house looks pretty cool and the windows just look fine. So what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them is you're right, they're fine. Uh, they're fine during the rest of the year, but unfortunately for this family, the father really wanted to have better protection for his home and his family. So he asked us to come out because he was tired of putting plywood in front of the glass to protect them from a hurricane. So he wanted to change out the windows and he chose a really strong window. So that if a hurricane does come, the family's gonna be really safe and they're gonna feel really secure in the home. We're really fortunate that he gave us this opportunity. All right, so dad, this looks like a pretty cool window. Is this the one that I chose? Yeah, this is the window they chose, and this should look familiar to you because they're actually the same windows we have in our house. Mm -hmm. 
and we order the windows for us just like this family ordered for them because it provides great hurricane protection. They also wanted the benefits of making the home more comfortable and it makes the home a lot more cooler in the summertime and it saves them a lot of money on their energy bills. All right, so Dad, this looks like a lot of work. What's happening here? You're right, Lex. There is a lot of work required here, and there's a great reason why the family chose our company to do this project is because you can't see what was going to be necessary when we initially met with them during the consultation. And when our installation teams removed the existing windows, they found out that structurally it wasn't strong enough to support the new windows that we were putting in. So we rebuilt this entire opening and, and reframed this entire space so that when the new strong hurricane window goes in, it's going to all work together to protect this home and this family. And they're going to be really happy with this decision because we did a lot of extra uh, work for them with no additional cost to them. So everything was included. So they're really happy with that decision. Wow, Dad, I didn't know you'd do so much to protect people. Yeah, we're really lucky that so many families asked us to protect not only their homes, but also their families. So our crews do a great job to ensure everyone is protected and everyone is safe for the hurricane seasons. Back, Back to, to you, Elena. Elena. Thanks, Lex and Tat. So Allison, we talked about the floor to ceiling windows. Now, the best way to enjoy the view, I think, is on a balcony. And you had to add those, right? Because this was yes. the heart, the Miami Heart Institute typically would not have a balcony. The connection between the inside and the outside was a hallmark of the design. Because the buildings were these different buildings over time, we ended up having a lot of large terrace and outdoor spaces naturally, but we did not have any balconies. So we actually had to engineer a solution in which we hung balconies onto the existing structure. I'm assuming that is a big deal to do that. It's That's not, not easy. Just no, 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 no. It's a little hard to retrofit a balcony. So you made it work. Yes. We've got beautiful balconies in all of these units, all different sizes, right? You could have a larger balcony, a smaller balcony, and of course the units that are fortunate enough to have terraces have really outside living rooms. I mean, they're It's they're almost giant. like having a, a yard. Yeah, we have terraces as big as a thousand or 1,500 square feet. Lots of great stuff. And of course, the models furnished with beautiful furniture too. Yes. I see some of the features here. After the structure is cleaned up and, and ready to go, um, the idea is to add soul, is to add texture, is to add some depth. With these really wonderful materials, this is a so leather, leather top, yeah, yeah leather so and nice. suede. And as you said, the, the rattan, which brings in a little bit of the tropics to the to the little theme. Miami yeah, style. Yeah, a little Miami, here. a little nod to Miami. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Great. And I also, I, what I love is like the, the oversized mirrors. There's lots of great ambient light around, lots of sconces kind of throughout all the hallways. And, and just probably at nighttime, I can imagine this feels like just a glowing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a great effect. Glowing, exactly. Coming up next, the adaptive architecture challenges of creating luxurious kitchens and baths. So Spira, you always have great moving tips. Give our viewers a couple of easy things that they could do when they're preparing for the move. Sure, it's actually what they don't have to do. They don't have to empty out the dresser drawers. Uh, as long as it's just clothes and linen, nothing heavy, they can leave it as is because we're gonna wrap the furniture and it'll keep the drawers shut. We also disassemble and reassemble furniture such as beds, pianos, uh, even desks with returns. And of course, we'll reassemble things on the other end. So what other tips do you got for our viewers? Well, one of the easiest things a, a, a customer can do is they can purge, right? Get rid of things that they don't need because they're gonna uh, waste time packing it and we're gonna move it, and they're gonna pay for things that they're just gonna throw it on the other end anyways. Best time to do it. Exactly, every time I've moved, I've purged. And if a customer is planning to pack their own belongings, I recommend they get it all packed before the movers arrive. This way we don't waste time, and it doesn't take any longer to uh, get the whole job done. So when someone's thinking about a move, how much notice do they need to give to get everything in motion? We always recommend giving us as much notice as possible. 30 days is usually a good, uh, good amount of time, but uh, we're also known as the same day move or last minute specialist. But uh, again, preparedness is a big key to moving. So Spiro, from what I understand, everything with Good Greek is in-house, correct? correct? Yeah. So we're never getting people from the outside that do, don't work for the company no. doing the deliveries. No, all of the movers, all of our employees are full-time. They work exclusively for us. And uh, as I always emphasize, they've been background checked and drug tested, and many of them have been with us for many, many years. 
If someone is thinking about a move or even storage, how do they contact you? Very easy. Simply dial star star Greek from your cell or go to goodgreek.com. You make it sound so simple. That's right. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Alina Capra, and we are here today at the Ritz Carlton Residences, Miami Beach, with Allison Greenfield of Lionheart Capital, the developers of this amazing project. How involved was it to do this complete overhaul? And we've got gas here, so. We committed heavily to doing the best product that we could. Obviously, you mentioned that we have these gas stoves. That was very important to us. Obviously, it would have been easier to just do electricity and not gas. Of course. It wasn't easy. Uh, one of the things, though, again, that it is different from adaptive reuse than new buildings is we had where to play in the ceiling. Because you've got that height. Right. We have the height, and we were able to, in most buildings today, your ceiling is the slab of the floor above you, maximum efficiency. Can't add lights, can't do anything. Very hard, dropping. very hard. <laughs> As an interior designer who has encountered that in many condos, I will speak for that too and yeah. say, when you have the opportunity to move lighting or do small plumbing moves without, I mean, simply because you have space between the ceiling. Yes. That is a huge yes. bonus. Yes. You could really, you're not restricted by anything. Yes. We've seen some of the living and dining room. We've seen the beautiful lobby areas. Now we have, of course, the kitchen, the heart of the home. You guys continued the beautiful minimalism of almost the Italian vibe. Tell us a little bit about this space. So our kitchens were done by Bofi. Uh, which is, of course, a well-known Italian kitchen manufacturer and designer. The stone, it's called Pietra d'Avola. It's a dark, natural stone with a lot of movement in it. It's nice because, again, it has that absorbing power for all of the brightness that we have here. Yeah, it really t pulls in a nice tone. Yes. The cabinets are a high lacquered white cabinet. All of our appliances are Gaganau. And what's so nice also about this that I'm seeing is you kind of are leaving potential homeowners with a great palette to do their own decorating with. I think that's really so important. Right around the corner, I noticed there was a little, almost a bonus area that sort of treated like a den in this mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. Was that the result of sort of having just a different type of floor plan based on the adaptive reuse of the space? Yes, because the way the window wall laid out and because of the way the layout worked, uh, we had a really big entranceway into the private part of the house. On paper, you would call it a hallway, but it was certainly too big. And so in this model, we turned that into the family room. So when you refer to these as almost vertical homes, yes, they are because it gives you those extra rooms that you don't always get in condos. Right. Next on SoFlo Home Project, we explore some of the world-class amenities, such as the half-acre rooftop pool and patio. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're here with Allison Greenfield from Lionheart Capital, one of the developers of this amazing Ritz-Carlton residence in Miami Beach. Allison, we're on the final stop of our tour and I think this is the best spot. The rooftop pool deck. Tell us a little bit more about this space. So this space is interesting. It was the roof of the original parking garage. We took off one layer and we installed a pool 75 feet long with a beautiful fountain at one end. Uh, what's unique about this pool deck is that it has sun all day long. There are no obstructions to the amount of sun one can get on this pool deck. And that is a big thing because there's a lot of times if it's in a specific area of a building, certain time of day, you lose the sun. Yes. It's a very clean look, a nice like natural aesthetic. Again, the celebration of Italian design. Um, the cabanas are beautiful, beautiful, bespoke wood structures. So the pretty. chairs, tables are ceramic. So they have a very beautiful, almost like lacquer finish on them. Yeah, they do in great shapes. You know, beautiful shapes, shapes, organics, right? And then of course, because we have many, many terraces in this property, everything is very lushly landscaped. There's a lot of green, so we have a lot of privacy up here. Now, this is just one of the amenities. There are so many. We touched on a few in the beginning, the day yacht, and you've got a helipad here. In the transportation modes, we have the day yacht, 
the house car which takes you sort of anywhere in Miami Beach area. The helipad brings you from the Bay of Biscayne straight to the Prip. We have a club room which is a beautiful 4,000 square foot room full of games. And we tried to keep it as low tech as possible. Of course, the digital version is the golf simulator. We have a theater. Individual residents can reserve it, or at times we have group parties, hopefully again soon. We have, of course, our kids' room, and it's just a place for kids to go and be kids. It just has this wonderful, soft, fun, playful palette. We have the first ever art studio inside a private condominium residence. Wow, so tell us about that. That sounds very interesting and not something you hear about every day. We came up with a program called the Artist in Residence Program, which is a local artist every three months is here using our studio as a studio and also as a place for our residents to come and interact with that artist. Wow, that's so cool. And take lessons. The concept all along has been designed for life. And whether you're a child or whether you're an adult, the idea here was that we wanted to create holistic experiences of a wonderful, the best lived life that you could imagine. Allison, I want to thank you so much. Today was so educational because adaptive architecture is not something we get to talk about every day, and I hope that our viewers really learned a lot about what that's all about, what goes into it, and of course, the beautiful end result. So thank you for showing us this amazing property. Thank you. And now let's see what Hunter Frankie from SoFlo Health has for us tomorrow. Hey Hunter, what is going on? Hey Elena, I hope you brought your appetite because tomorrow on SoFlo Health we are grilling outside, hopefully dodging the weather, and we're going to show you how to make a cookout healthier without sacrificing the flavor. Plus, Dr. Claudia Caprio helps us check in with each other during this pandemic. Morgan has a workout that you can do at home or in the gym, and the CDC has some recommendations regarding masks and gloves that you won't want to miss. It's all tomorrow right here on Local 10. Thanks, Hunter. We'll definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed learning about this incredible South Florida property with such a great history and how it's turned into the luxurious Ritz-Carlton Residences, Miami Beach. And we'll see you again next week for another episode of SoFlo Home Project, only on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like home. SoFlo Home. If you missed any part of this home tour, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You can also submit your design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we talk design rules, which to follow and which to break, but still make your project look great.